All right, just before we go, I have another birthday, which I have to do because it's the daughter of our chief operating officer in the group, Mr. Christopher Barnes. His daughter's name is uh, Olivia Barnes. Beautiful young miss. So here is, uh, yep, there you go. Here's Olivia. I hope you have an absolutely amazing day from your dad and the, the entire family and from us here at TVJ. All right, so welcome back, folks. Dooley, let's get to some hot topics. What's the first one in Prasita? Wait, let's come play, 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 play. Make the bump, the bump, You will know, what's the first Make one? Make the bump, bump. Oh, oh. We give you the hot topics this morning. Let me, let me, let me tell you something. Yesterday was Tuesday. The people said, "Black it out, oh, black it out, yeah." Social media and the music community go dark in support of Black Out Tuesday. Let me tell you something. It was originally organized by the music community. The social media world went dark in support of the Black Lives Matter movement, joining voices around the world outraged by the killings of black people in the United States. Now, we saw a lot of the music companies posting black with a lot of hashtags, the show must be paused, black heart emojis were out. I mean, if you woke up and turned on your Instagram, you were like, whoa, if you didn't know about it, it would have drawn your attention. Um, protests all through the United States. Uh, you know, people were, ugh, it was not just in response to the recent George Floyd, but you know, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and all others before. And the Jamaicans joined the world with a blackout Tuesday. We saw posts from Sham Bounty Killer Rope by any means necessary. Romaine Virgo encourages fans to stand for something or fall for anything. So the music fraternity was out, but everybody was out. Um, but a couple of our artists um, did not follow the script the entire way. Yeah. Agent Sasko said after posting his black box, he said, no, nah, black out. Remember when you black out, you knock out. I get it, I post my black screen to support the cause. At the same time, why it have to be a mute situation? In other yeah. words, the same platform that has been sharing information and keeping me up to speed on what's going on over the world, mm -hmm. we must all of a sudden do this bird box challenge, blindfold, lock off from seeing everything. Mm -hmm. We're not sure about that part. Yeah. We support the cause, clearly. But that mute situation, no, me kusi Now, this is, and I like his train of thought, and that's why we must have open debate about these things. When we black out for one day, what happens on Wednesday morning? And I am very, very, very passionate about this conversation, Sasko and the entire music industry. When we wake up after we black out, and some people say silence is compliance as well. All right, we took a pause. But also, there are people within the Black Lives Matter, the hashtag, because it's a campaign mm -hmm, via mm -hmm, hashtag, mm -hmm. have asked people, an asked people yesterday, don't post Black Lives Matter with the Blackout Tuesday, because what you've done now is kill all the, the, the potent information for the fight, the campaign, and the cause, because all you see is a black screen when you press Black Lives Matter. So what they wanted to see is Blackout Tuesday, but separate it because Black Lives Matter, if it's protest information, how to sign up, how to fight, you would have lost that information with a bunch of black squares. So yeah. the argument is there. Also, Neville, when we wake up tomorrow morning, are we still going to be feeding the same system that we are fighting? Meaning, the same people who have held us down, who made the money from enslavement and colonization and systematic white supremacy, are we still going to be feeding them with their products, buying their products, importing their products, promoting their products all over our music videos like we have no conscience of where we're supposed to go as a goal, as one people? Unity and collective economics and security is what we need as a people. And if we keep on feeding the system we are fighting, we are hypocrites and we need to get clear what the direction is and Marcus Garvey already wrote a story, an idea, a black print, a plan for us. When are we going to read, wake up and realize where the true wealth lies and where true health comes? It is in us as a people being organized. We miss you. We miss mm. you. Kabaka Pyramid also said, giving thanks for the solidarity being shown by the gestures of unity on social media. But this is not a day of silence, but a day for black people to let their voices be heard as the world is listening. I find the call for black squares and for us to stop streaming, stop releasing music hypocritical because these are the same record labels with music promoting guns, drugs, violence, degrading women. 
Let us stream music to effect social change and re-educate the mind through music and documentaries. Keep people up to speed with issues affecting black people all over the world. And we will be checking in, as we yep. said earlier, with an entertainment journalist that has yep. been on this show and another resident in the United States on that matter. Yep. Next one. Um, two policemen are challenging, challenging the constitutionality of appeal hearing by Zoom by using the Zoom platform, via the Zoom platform. The policemen are Kevin Shirley and Mark Williams. All right, so they're contending, among other things, that the Constitution stipulates that court proceedings shall be held in public. Their attorney, Hugh Wildman, filed an application yesterday to take the matter to the Privy Council, almost a week after the appeal court refused the cops' appeal against their October 2018 convictions and sentences on some last scenario charges. The appeal was heard via Zoom, but the cops claimed that the hearing breached their constitutional right. Wow. There's a lot of conversation about this, um, even about board meetings. You know, um, can, can you actually have a resolution having a board meeting online if your, you know, your documents, your papers don't say that you can. So yeah. there's a lot of conversation about the effectiveness. It's a new dy dynamic yeah. now, though. Things are, are incredibly different mm -hmm. now um, mm -hmm. in every single sphere of life. Yeah. Um, at the workplace, at home, in schools, um, in, in meetings, mm -hmm. everything is different. So I'm not a legal mind, so I'm not going to challenge what I just read or what Empress just read. Um, but it's a... It's a new time, strange yeah. time. So, and this is a time where we're going to have to make amendments to our uh, laws, right. policies, That's what I'm articles not a legal of association. Mind, so I'm not gonna, yeah, we, yeah, you're go. We, I mean, but yeah. hey, yeah. we have a right to yeah. challenge anything, yeah, especially What's the next if you one? feel your constitutional rights have been breached. Okay, uh, Minister with Responsibility for Education, Carl Samuda, gives reasons why Jamaica has brought forward the CSEC exam dates, Mr. Bell. Mm. Um, it should have been on July 13 or July no, 27, but now he said it would begin on July 13. 132,000 Jamaican students will sit the CSEC exams. Um, the earlier start date will facilitate the completion of the examination by August 3, enabling the students to have a one-month break before the start of the new school year, says Mr. Samuda. He said, based on all consultations, the ministry is satisfied that in most instances, the year's syllabus will be completed by the end of the school term. The what? only issue I have with that, yeah. um, because they said school will start for the CSEC and Cape students on Monday, mm -hmm. um, June 8th. The only issue I have with that is not everyone would have been able to learn online because not everyone has access to internet. Mm -hmm. What happens then? So Empress have internet and every day she's at school, teachers talking to her and she's learning. I don't. So I don't have that luxury and I didn't get that teaching while I was off. That's my only concern. I, I hear the concern, but so, because I am privy to some information from some rural schools and also somebody that worked with me, her daughter, she doesn't have internet at home. You know what she did? She turned up at the school gates every morning with her daughter and told the principal, since nobody's here, I'm gonna be here every day with my daughter to get the lessons on the computer in class socially, physically distant. Mm -hmm. So she took that initiative. So they're also in rural schools where the auntie would get the information on WhatsApp if they didn't have it, bring it to the child, and the child has their books and can still do the work. So it's about a community coming together. Which is true. And but if, I think if, we need to look, but I'm saying when we don't have, when we're disadvantaged, we have to work a little harder to try to keep up with the rest. That's just the way the no, world is. No, and moves. I accept that. But having said all of that, mm -hmm. the fact is that some students never had any classes yeah. since March yeah. because they don't yeah. have the internet and maybe they didn't have the wherewithal, as you just suggested, mm -hmm. or maybe the thinking wasn't there. Maybe let's, let's go to the school. Because I know some schools, there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. the, the, the principal wasn't there. And what's going to happen is if know? they have fallen behind, it is now for us to pick up the but fallen. But that's my point. And, no, but they're going to have to sit the exam. And if they don't do well, then it really is up to their teachers and education, you know, ministry to pick them up and help them to catch up. That's really, yeah. some are going to fall behind. It's a, it's a way of the world. We, we wish it wasn't that way. But yeah. also, we must say, um, the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, engaged, engaged in consultation of principals of secondary schools 
Association of Principals and Vice Principals, the Jamaica Teachers Association, the Encumenical Church Group, the Parent Teacher Association, and the Jamaica Prefects Association. Now, the minister noted that the National Secondary Students Council Public Relations Officer is on record in the meeting, noting that a delay in the exams will hold back the students. She argued that such a decision would adversely affect students' chances of getting into universities overseas for the 2020-21 school year, right? That is what Samada, um, Samuda mentioned in Parliament. So for all of the young people who are coming out and saying we weren't consulted, well, keep having your voice heard, keep standing up, but know that the facts on the record after the minister apologized for the statement made has now come to say that some students were consulted in the decision and they needed to do that so the children would have one month break before starting the new year. We got to go to news in five. Two